Okay, at the risk of re, uh, being redundant on this motor because I've described it in the past, um, I'm going to describe it again. Um, I've got eight coils at about 9, 10 ohms a piece and eight magnets and quite frankly I can't remember whether they're north facing out south inward I'll have to check that but um, there's eight magnets and these foil tabs cover each one of the magnets and the idea behind that is to uh, get uh, put, put an electrical field across these electrodes there's one on each side of the rotor here and here so there's four electrodes and the idea behind that was to place an e-field a uh, high voltage field across those magnets perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field in which case it, the idea was to cause a force and I have yet to prove whether or not that works or not um, but uh, it's working on the basis that uh, the pointing vector is going to create a force and really the pointing vector is uh, is uh, not a force unto itself but it's it's a uh, well it's actually the electromagnetic field causing the force and that's just a measure of that the pointing vector but it has magnitude and direction uh, so the direction would be perpendicular to both the electric field and the magnetic field so I have an electric field going this way a magnetic field going this way so the pointing vector would be pointing this way. Now it depends on which way we have the E field oriented, either positive or negative, as to which direction the pointing vector would, would point. So, this, uh, in addition to that, this would also act as an electrostatic motor, uh, having, having a more positive uh, electrode here and negative here, or vice versa. Um, so, what I intend to do is use two car coils to create a uh, high field, uh, electrical field. So I'll have a, for instance, uh, a strong negative here and ground on the other side and a strong positive on this one and then a ground on this side so that both fields will uh, cause the uh, rotor to rotate in the same direction, the force. And that's the idea behind this motor. Right now it functions purely as a pulse motor and the way I have it configured right now is all the coils are in series. So I have roughly uh, 80 ohms DC resistance in series and in this configuration on 12 volts it draws about uh, oh about 75 milliamps roughly but as uh, everyone knows that works with these types of motors um, that's not going to be entirely accurate because the the analog meter that I'm using isn't going to really respond that quickly. And I don't know if I can get a good zoom on that, but once it's up and running, it's it's running at about 75 milliamps. Now, in addition to uh, the fact that it's a pulse motor, and that's not entirely accurate, the uh, hall sensor is not running through that uh, meter either. So uh, the hall sensor, I think, draws about 20 milliamps. So all said and done, right now in this configuration, 12 volts, all the coils in series, it's drawn about 100 milliamps. 
and it's running a little over a thousand RPMs in this configuration. Taking a quick measurement. It's not very easy to take a measurement. I don't know if that'll come out or not. Oh, lost it. But I'll take my word for it. It's, it's running at about a thousand RPM. Nothing to brag about. But the idea is when I add the electrostatic field, you know, is that going to cause the rotor to increase in speed? And that's what I'm going to test. So there's a little bit of an explanation of what this project's about. And thanks for watching.